Sunday will be another game for me. You know, it's uh, just the next game on the schedule. Obviously, it's my old team. But, you know, treating it like a, another game on the schedule. Do you think that could be hard? I mean, it's easy to say it's another game, but it's a place you got a lot of history and played a lot of games. Do you think it'll be hard to try to pretend, I guess, it's another game? No, not at all, because naturality, it is another game. I have to go out there and be at my best for my team. I have to go out there and, and be down there for 60 minutes, not allowing any big plays, not allowing any catches. Um, doing whatever I need to do to make sure, you know, I slow my, my guy don't show up on the stat sheet. You know, so that's my main focus. That's my main goal going into this week. And I'm working for, uh, towards that all, all week this week. Who has more of an advantage in your mind in this situation? A receiver that knows your tendencies or you knowing the receiver's tendencies? Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, when you get out on the ball, on the, on, on the football field, you know, we're just being ballers, you know. Um, they have a lot of great receivers on them. That, on that roster this year, obviously D Hop is leading the way. AJ Green has been a team, an eleven-year vet in this league. Um, my draft mate, um, Christian Kirk, had a great game last week. You know, but at the end of the day, uh, every defense has an assignment and a, and a responsibility. You know, if we're able to do that to our full potential, you know, we'll be able to make it out of bounds. Patrick, what was your relationship like with Kyler? A couple of years you guys played together. Uh, me and Kyler had a, a, a real close, cool relationship. You know. Um, Obviously, was a young guy getting drafted there in say, eight, eighteen, nineteen. He got drafted. Yeah. So whenever he he got drafted, you know, just trying to show him the ropes, you know, help him understand the ins and outs, uh, not only about the league, but you know, uh, about how to maintain himself, handle his business around the locker room, how guys look up to him, and uh, he's taking that uh, leadership role um, for sure and, and ran with it. You know, so uh, me and him did have a. a Great relationship while I was there, and um, I haven't talked to him since the start of training camp. But you know, we, I'm sure it'll be a little, little jawing, jawing at each other here uh, come Sunday for sure. Is that kind of unique where you were in your career when he was drafted? I mean, it's we talked about it here with like Justin and Adam. There's such a big age gap, mm -hmm. but like they're so close. I mean, was yeah. that kind of the way it was <clears throat> for you? Uh, no, not really, because he was on the offensive side of the ball, so we rarely got an opportunity to. To interact with each other on the field, but in the locker room, we always, you know, crack jokes on each other, uh, talk about certain uh, techniques that DBs like to use. Um, you know, ask him a couple questions about defenses. You know, so uh, it, it was uh, unique in the age um, difference, but you know, I still feel like I'm young enough to, to stay up with the mojo and, and all the, the catchphrases they like to use around the locker room. <laughs> How does his mobility, from your experience practicing against him, change what you guys have to do in the secondary? Uh, you know, you have to be disciplined in your rush lanes. You have to pass to your coverage because he's a guy that can extend the plays with his legs. Um, he's always looking to throw the ball first and uh, run. Is running running is a second option unless it's a design run. But he's looking to make plays with his arm. And, you know, he, him and Russell Wilson to me are in that came that same category of quarterbacks that's very elusive in the pocket. You have to know where he is at all times, and also you have to be uh, uh, tight on your coverage because you know that's when big plays are allowed. When the quarterback gets out of the pocket, um, extend the time a little bit. Receivers kind of know where they're going, so we have to be on our P's and Q's and make sure that we're faster on that coverage. When you do, um, hopefully you don't. You know, I know that's a, a big if and a big you know uh, uh, answer, a question to answer. But um, if he does get out of the pocket, we have to make sure that we're tight on our coverage. How impressive was what Hopkins did last year in his first year with the team, and what stood out to you about AJ Green's game over the years? Um, you know, it was very. I won't necessarily call it say it was impressive because he's been doing that for you know as long as he's been in the league. You know, he's been a 12, 1300 yard guy. You know, since day one. You know, so it wasn't it wasn't a, a surprise at all. You know, Hobbs is a great professional. Take care of his take care of his body. Um, you know, obviously, when Sunday rolls around, he's ready to play. And AJ Green, his you know his resume speaks for itself as well. Um, you know, uh, very very talented talented receiver um, that can make all the catches. Still got a little juice to take the top off the defense. Um, you know, these guys have a, a, a well rounded receiver core that we have to uh, be prepared for because uh, any one of those guys can make a big play. Hey. One is his uh, catch, 
him catching the ball. It's very, you know, you rarely see D Hop drop any passes. You know, you catch all the all, all of the contested catches out of throws. Um, you know, so you just have to make those window windows a little bit tighter, you know, be a little bit tighter of the coverage. Um, you know, just try to, you know, as best as you can, just try to make his day a living hell. You know, but D Hop is one of those receivers that that invites the physicality of the uh, of the receiver uh, of the DB. You know, so and that's kind of how I play my game as well. I, I want to be physical with the receivers and, and, and kind of get in their head and have them thinking about me a little bit more. But D Hop is different. You know, he invites that. So it's going to be a little bit of a chess match um, whenever I have my opportunities to go up against him. Um, like I said, it should be a fun game. It should be a, be a fun matchup whenever we do have an opportunity to match up. It should be an electrifying game um, that we, you know, looking to prepare for and, and hopefully get a dub. Pat, with the game being in Arizona, do you expect any kind of reception or reaction from the fans? And, and also, do you expect there to be quite a few Vikings fans there? Um, yeah, from the looks of things last week, I know it was a little bit more of a closer <coughs> trip. Um, but it was a uh, Skull Nation definitely, you know, showed up. Cincinnati, so hopefully they can do the same thing there in, um, in the toaster at the uh, State Farm Arena. You know, no, is it State Farm? Yeah, it is State Farm. Nope. Is it State Farm? It is now. Okay, I thought so. I couldn't remember. <laughs> <laughs> at the State, at the State Farm um, Arena. But as far as my welcome back, you know, I really don't know. You know, like I said, I'm, I'm really, I know, I mean, what was your name? Chad. Chad said it may be harder than, you know, uh, it may be easy to say than done, but I'm really treating this like another game on the schedule. So I'm not expecting anything. You know, if it comes, you know, I, I would definitely welcome it. But, you know, at the end of the day, this is a, a week two game that I'm trying to prepare for and help my guys be in the best position possible to go out there and get the dub. Is, is that a mentality you've developed over your career, just being able to compartmentalize one game and not put too much weight on any any result or any circumstance? Oh, yeah, it's a long season. Like, I talked to you guys um, early on in the year, you know, you know I, I'm a cruising altitude type guy. You know, I never want to get too high, I never want to get too low, because uh, it's a long season. And anything can happen at any given time throughout the game or the season, for that matter. So every game is it's just another game on the schedule, you know, that I'm looking to prepare for and go out there and give it my all to, to make plays for this defense and this team as well. A few more for Pat. Pat, by and large, do you feel like just the way that things ended in Arizona and you coming here, do you feel like you were respected by the organization? You know, um, I said what I said a couple of, couple of months back. You know, now my focus is on truly just going out here and just trying to get a dub and play my best football. You didn't get a lot of targets uh, Sunday in Cincinnati. How do you Pro think football you're... focus thought I did. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? How do you think your debut went? Um, I thought it went well, you know, on the action that, that I did get. But I do prepare myself for getting a lot more action this week, you know. And, and you know, that's just my mindset of uh, whoever I'm guarding, he's getting the ball, you know. So that's my focus on this week. I thought my debut was uh, pretty well. Now, you know, the debut is over. Now I'm moving forward to week two. Hopefully, I can get uh, on the stat sheet a little bit more this week. How often is what you expect from a being tested number of, of times a target year or whatever match up when it comes to game day? So, I'll repeat that one more time. So, so like today, Thursday, you know, you have X number, oh, then I try to throw my direction this many times, and then like by game day it comes around and, oh, it's, it's once, or, oh, it's, you know, three times, you know? Yeah, you know, I'm the, I'm the type of guy that, you know, always preach to the guys, practice how you want to play. You know, if you practice being in position, practice breaking up the ball, when the game comes, it's going to come easy. But the hard thing about that, if balls doesn't don't come your way, you still have to maintain focus. Still have to maintain your your obedience within the defense. You know, you can't get bored because, like I talked about earlier, it's a long football game, a long season, and anything can happen. So, you know, that second of me losing focus, or, or that second of me not being dialed in, that could have been my pitch that I let up. You know, so one of my coaches used to always tell me, you know, when your pitch come, you got to hit it. And, you know, so I, I always want to put myself in the best position possible throughout the weeks of throughout the week of practice. So when that pitch does show up, I got to be ready to hit the basketball. Thanks, Matt. All right, guys. Have a great day.